Forecasting space weather this week is a bit of a challenge. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see there's a ton of filaments all over the disk. In fact, on the first, you can see one lifting off there in the north. We're actually coming down right now from several solar storms that has hit us over the July 4th holiday and brought aurora to mid-latitudes, and believe it or not, there's still more coming. In fact, as we take a look at this coronal hole as it's rotating through central disk here, you can see on the third, you see how that thing begins to close? It almost looks like the coronal hole is closing. That is because it launched a southeast solar storm towards Earth. This solar storm is barely visible in coronagraphs, but it is going to hit Earth right around the 7th. So we're going to have yet another solar storm, and I don't know how large it's going to be because this thing is wispy. Meanwhile, we have a bunch of active regions that are emerging on the Earth-facing disk, and region 3053 is actually an M-flare player, so we do have risks for big flares and even more can be coming. As we take, turn and take a look at our uh, far-sided disk, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see past region 3053, there's actually quite a few other regions, and you actually can see a little bit of solar storms being launched. So these are also solar storm players, and they may be big flare players as well. And this means anyone dealing with radio comms for space traffic, get ready, because it looks like uh, radio blackouts are going to be back on the menu. And now for your LEO Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. As we take a look at our space radiation environment, it's actually been quite active over this past week. Right about the turn of the month, we were coming down from a solar storm, and so the charging environment, especially internal charging, was pretty intense. You can tell that from our radiation clock, the inner ring being all lit up, especially post-noon into pre-dusk uh, here. Those uh, areas are, were very uh, susceptible for internal charging, and internal charging is due to those high-energy particles that penetrate spacecraft and cause electrical upsets and discharges from the inside out. Of course, this charging environment continued to worsen until that expected solar storm, the first of several over the July 4th holiday, uh, hit Earth. On the second, you can see it flush everything out. You especially can tell because the radiation belt here in the bottom goes blue. That means the flux has dropped quite a bit. And you can see our radiation clock goes green for a bit. And now we start building up that surface charging. That's now the outer ring, and that is occurring uh, basically post-midnight, pre-dawn sector. This is due to the low energy particles. These are the ones that uh, collect on the outside of the spacecraft and can charge up even on the solar arrays and then can cause electrical upsets and discharges from the outside in. But you can see once again as those particles began to really charge up and we were worried about internal charging beginning to build, on the fourth, whoosh, once again we got another flush. The radiation belts turn blue again, that means the fluxes die down, and everything turns out to be pretty much in the green. And right now, we're beginning to build those particles back up very slowly, but we do have another solar storm coming that should hit us right around the 7th, and whatever we're building here is probably going to flush. So you satellite operators in GEO and MEO orbits, you don't have to worry. It looks like at least for the next couple days, everything will be in the green. For more details on this week's space weather, including how that stealthy solar storm may affect you, come check out my channel or see me at spaceweatherwoman.com.